Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Today I'll talk about Change Data Capture or CDC. We're going to go through what is CDC, why do you need it, and why most companies using databases end up using CDC. At first, the definition. CDC is the process of recognizing when data has changed in a source system so that a downstream system can take an action based on that change. So I want you to focus on a few keywords, the first one being a process, a source system, downstream system, and action. We are going to talk about each of them in details, but I need you to keep them in mind to understand it better. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Let's imagine you have some customer data in your application in a MySQL database. This can be anything. In this example, we are just using a MySQL database. Now in your application, let's say you used a MySQL database as a transactional database, but you also want the same data in a data warehouse, which is going to be used for analytics purposes. Let's say you also have another database, which is a relational database where you have all the sales data. You do have customer related information in that table. So you need the data to be updated whenever something changes on the customer's end. And finally, let's say you have some stream processing job, which does some kind of analytics or processing and then shows the data uh, on a dashboard, right? and you want to make sure whenever your customer data changes, your processor, your stream processor goes ahead and processes the new information in real time. So these are some very common downstream uh, jobs that you might need when a, a data changes in your source system. So in this case, your source system is your customer data MySQL table to the left and your target system or downstream system are the data warehouse, the sales data, and the stream processor. So how does that work? Let's imagine you have your application backend code over here. And then the backend, it can be a bunch of endpoints. They are writing to your database, which in our case is gonna be just a relational database. So what happens is whenever something changes in your database, your database is going to write a Kafka message downstream related to that change. So every data mutation, whether it's an insert, an update, or a delete, the database is going to write a message into Kafka related to that database, uh, delete, uh, related to that change, right? So if it's an insert statement, the database is going to dump that insert statement into Kafka with all the data that was just inserted. If it's an update statement, the database is going to dump a message to Kafka where it tells Kafka both the older version and the new updated version. And for delete too, the database is going to do exactly the same thing. So what happens is your application code writes to the database the database sends a message to Kafka and then all your target systems that care about your source database are going to be subscribed to the Kafka topic to read from it, right? That way, whenever there is a message on Kafka, your target systems are going to be aware of it and then update their data or do some processing according to the Kafka message. That's how the whole CDC pipeline works in real time. Once again, you have your application code, which does all the mutations to your database. Whenever there is a mutation in your database, the database is going to write a message downstream into Kafka. And then all the systems that care about this data changing is going to subscribe to that Kafka topic so that in real time, they get notified and can act accordingly whenever there is new data or a, a mutation on an existing data. So what happens every time data changes? The source system, which is going to be the source database, it's going to push the change to Kafka by writing to a topic. 
You have your target systems, which are going to be listening to the topic if they do care about that data and then consume messages from that topic. Whenever there is a message, they're going to consume it and then apply changes accordingly. So if it's a database that pretty much replicates the data, it's going to do it. If it's a stream processor that, uh, that performs some kind of logic on the data, it can take that action. So whatever it wants to do, it can listen to the Kafka message, consume it, and then act on it. So what are some of the use cases of CDC? The first, the first one is to replicate the data in other databases. It's very common to have a transactional database, a data warehouse, and a data lake. And CDC is a very good way to keep the same data synchronized across the different databases. You can do stream processing based on data changes. So let's say whenever a customer's information change, you want to do some processing and then send an email or something to that customer. You can do that using a stream processor listening to the CDC stream. You can also validate or invalidate your cache. So depending on, let's say, if some data was deleted or new data was added, you could invalidate your cache or add the new data into your cache. You can also trigger asynchronous jobs based on data changes. So let's say whenever a customer row changes in your source database, you could trigger an email or some kind of, uh, it could be an email, it, can, it could be a text message, or it could be some other more complicated task that could be kicked off asynchronously based on the data change. So yeah, hopefully that gave you an idea of how CDC works. I'm gonna go back to the diagram over here. So essentially what how it works is you have your application code which interacts with your database. So it writes, deletes, and updates data in your database. What your database does is whenever it changes any data or adds any new data or deletes data, it writes to a Kafka topic and then you have all your target systems that care about this data subscribed and listening to that Kafka topic. So whenever there is a message in that Kafka topic, they will be aware of it. They will know what new data was added or what data changed and they can take steps accordingly. So hopefully that gives you a full picture of how end-to-end -end CDC works and what are some good use cases of it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. With that being said, hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.